well, 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 well. Fuck you, man. You don't know DJ Mark. You better preach. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run in backs. It ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say win. Wins when wins, congregation say amen. Trades, debates, wins, losses, the latest news, but Prophet Kev speak, he got him saying hallelujah. Oh, welcome to Preach Kev. Preach with Rashad here in the episode. Another sermon coming at you from Wildcard Sports here on Wildcard TV. Rashad, NBA, I guess, I guess. I guess it really, it's still getting started. NBA's draft just ended, but you know, free to see around the corner. Uh, but man, what's going on, man? It's, it's been a, it's been a rough little couple of days. Oh man, I'm I'm just enjoying the summer, man. Like it's it's hot as hell everywhere. Like everybody said, the sun sun like it never sun before. <laughs> but <laughs> but man, I'm I'm enjoying the summer, man. You know, we got plenty of vibes out right now. We're vibing to the Drake album, I think mm. that I think that's hard. Breezy just dropped me hey, like last night. Hey. I, I already gave my boy two two spins already. He already passed the headphone test and the car test. Hey, that's that's hey, that's two spins, forty eight songs, boy. Dude, so and he said he dropping the deluxe. He gonna add about ten nine more joints on there. So so shout out Breezy. Shout out Breezy. Um, you know, I it, it's still early. Like you know, I, I I listen to the albums before I go on Twitter, all that kind of stuff, or like I'll just kind of like. Tweet like a little song I like, or whatever. But some people are already kind of saying like they, they think it's his best album ever. I, I think that's a little too soon to say. It only been <laughs> barely twenty four hours. hours if that. <laughs> like so, yeah. I think that's a little too. Like he it just dropped at midnight. Today's Friday, so he just dropped at midnight. So it's only been out not even for twenty four hours. So I think that's a. I don't want to go to best album ever, but I, uh, it definitely has the potential. Like it's definitely in his top. Like off of first two spins, I'll it's say, definitely one of his five yeah. best albums. I'll say this. I don't I don't know if it has any elite songs yet. It's still early. But it don't have oh, no man. bad songs. And ain't, ain't no bad but, but, but Warm Embrace is the coldest song of the year but, thus far. But it's no bad songs though. I'll say that. No. Like, like, there's no bad song. At, at 24 songs ain't nothing bad. So no. so that that yeah. is that is the first step of being the all-time classic is is no 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 skips. If you got you got to have no no skips and that that's one that had no skips. So and that's only like you said a couple of spins around. So, shout out yeah, to Breezy. I already, man. I already gave it two spins, man. Shout out to Breezy. Like, um, hey, I think out. Woman Brace. Go ahead, bro. I would say shout out Give Young too, man. He dropped. He dropped some. Oh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll Give Young. Yeah, too, Give Young dropped too. Um, I haven't spent the whole thing. Only, only had a chance to spend half of that. I like it this yeah. far. Yeah, but I say I spent half of it too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that that Breezy, man. I think Woman Brace is the coldest song of the year thus far. That that's a hitter. That's a good. One. That's a good. One. You know the. The sleep at night joint, man. That's that's real R and B right there. He killed that one. Freaking nice. uh, forbidden is dope. I mean, the whole the whole thing is dope, man. Possessive, like he got some good features on there. So yeah, breezy, breezy's killing it. Um, Beyonce's new joint, break my soul. That's a, that's a, that's a hot summer joint. Oh yeah, shout out, yeah, Beyonce went crazy on that one too. Hey, hey um, and people been been talking crap. But it first dropped, people were talking crazy on Drake album. I liked it though, man. Like, I think. Hey. I think it was just a little switch up. Yeah, he's been doing that, but that album, that album smacks, man. I, I, I spend that liability about ten times a day. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm a, liabilities go. <laughs> uh, flights booked, man. Give me that stick. Sticky, massive, man. Even that one, man. Like that, that whole thing is to me no skips. Yeah, and of course yeah. you, you got to shot the video, the falling back video. You got to shot the video. Shout out Drake, man. <laughs> shout out Drake. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good time for music, man. Shout out, shout out. Hey, everybody talking about something that you know they don't like dancing, man. But I see everybody out here getting it, getting it now. It took it took a little man. second. It took a little second. Yeah, like the, the, joke, the, the jokes are always funny, but once you really have to settle down and listen to the music, like he said in the interview, like once you really settle down and listen to it, it's like, all right, that's that's cool. And like people who are in the industry are like letting people him, let him know, like, yo, J- this album. J. Like, J. Cole said, Cole, J. Cole said it was amazing. So, hey, yeah, like people, certified. people really dig it, man. Like, you got to just respect the art for him. Drake is dope. Chris Brown on album number 10, bro. Like, we didn't grew up with Brown 10 mm-hmm. albums. That's Come hilarious. on, man. Plus the mixtapes. So Drake, Beyonce, Chris Brown, stars in the all. They they all they all stars in the all right. And then we had yeah. a couple couple of uh, NBA stars potential in this in this draft. Uh Magic had number one pick. They picked uh Paolo. Hey, it's crazy, man. We 
Too bad we ain't living in Illinois or somewhere where we can bet that because that, that was plus nine hundred. We could have got that. We could have yeah, got Jer- that. Yeah, Jersey had it up. Um, a few other places had it up. Like it wasn't. Even though there are betting states, it wasn't available in every betting state. Right. So right. you know, they, they if you if you got a chance to take advantage of them, those Palo odds, I hope you cashed out. Um, John Davis on the. Yeah, I, I know when it was like plus 1600, you were like, bro, just throw 100 on it. I'm like, I think he'll go to win. Like, he my best prospect. But I was like, I'm going to wait and see how the odds move a little bit later on down the line. And then I just never. I'm about to say, because we knew. All right, we everybody, we, we released our mock and we got the first five right. Just not the order, obviously. Paolo and Jabari flipped. I got I had Keegan going four and, and Ivy five. I think you, you had it reversed. Um, we, we got the first five right. I knew Benedict was going somewhere in the top eight. Um, and I think you had, I think he, he, he had good odds too. Like his over under of, of uh seven and a half was some really good odds. Like, if you wanted to bet on the draft, you could have really made a lot of money. Yeah, it, it, it can it really kind of hold held chalk for like the first five for sure. Uh, so the first five, Paulo went to Orlando, Chet went to OKC, Jabari to Houston, Keegan Murray to Sacramento, and Jada Ivy to Pistons. I think that those are the five best players to me in this draft. I went top five. Then you had Benedict and Shaden Sharp and Dyson Daniels, some wing players right there going six, seven, eight to Indiana, Portland, and New Orleans, respectively. And then you had uh, Jeremy Sohan uh, from Baylor. Man, that, I was I didn't when you when you told me the under over under eleven and a half, I was like, well, if you think Johnny Davis going under ten and a half, I was like, there's only really one spot for him to go. Like, couple like because because you said Wizards need a guard, right? So that the ten the ten was going guard no matter what. And then I was yep. like, I didn't know what the Knicks were going to do. I was, they traded the pick to OKC, but Knicks, Knicks didn't need a Knicks could have gone anywhere, and I don't think they would have draft him either because Toppin and Mitch Robinson, they didn't really need to draft another big guy or, or or you know somebody who can play the forward spot at that time. So I was like, I don't know where he go, but he goes he go to your San Antonio Spurs, which I think we all knew they needed some kind of guy above six seven. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever it was had to be taller than six seven. Um, Spurs got him, and then Johnny Davis to the Washington Wizards. That was just, that's the top ten. Um, I don't really think anything was a surprise. I mean, I thought it was a, a relatively good draft. Um, any any anything that caught your attention uh, right away, uh, as far as you know, whether whether it's Paolo to Orlando or whatever it is. Yeah, the thing that caught my attention the most was the Thunder drafting two Jalen Williams. <laughs> I'm about to say, other than that, I'm about to say, other, but but off off like off some real stuff. Like I already, I'm only gonna get one. Cause what if they drafted the wrong one? Bro, I'm in the other one. I, I, I just thought that was funny. Two people with basically the same name getting drafted in the same draft. But um, y'all yeah, on the serious tip. Uh, the first eight was chalk, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, like you said, real quick on the Spurs, Sohan. It was basically going to be him, him, Mark Williams, or Jalen Duran. So you know, the Spurs were going to draft a big no matter what. It was just a matter of who they liked. And like Johnny that. Davis, the Wizards need a guard. They've been looking for a guard to go alongside Bradley Bill or to maybe replace Bradley Bill, which we'll get into in a few minutes. So, um, my favorite pick of the first round was, of course, power to the Magic. Along, but the second thing I liked was the Blazers getting shade on Sharp. Yes, sir. So because if, if he if he pans out and is elite, that could be your potential Bill replacement or not Bills Dame replacement, <laughs> or that could be your backcourt of the future with Simons and Sharp if you were to move on from Dame at some point. Right. So um, he has the upside. So I think that was a, a pretty good pick. The the Pelicans getting a bit guard in Daniels. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just to kind of go down a little bit further to get out of the lottery, the Hawks drafting A.J. Griffin kind of reminds me of them taking Cam Reddish. You know, they did trade him away, so I guess you're trying to replace that, mm-hmm. that wing spot because they were going to have to pay Cam. And since you traded him away, now you have A.J. Griffin. You're starting over that that rookie deal, which is smart in the South of the Cap League because you're, you're paying Capella, you're paying John Collins, you're paying Trey Young, you still got Gallinari, Herder, um, Bogdanovich all on your books. You need some cheap contracts, and um, you moved on from Reddish. You have a Griffin now, so I like that as well. Yeah, uh, I think – so, obviously, my – And the Heat getting your, um, the heat at 27. 
That was no, that was a good pick. That was a good pick. Um, so I got a couple. Um, I think my my favorite my favorite pick was Keegan Murray. Um, honestly, it uh, is also a little biased. Um, cause when I when I like when I used to play basketball, I kind of see myself in that like small forward, power forward form where you like six eight, six ten, where you can do pretty much everything. It, whether it's a whether you whether you make it to an elite standard or whether you just be good, you know. And I I think the Kings when you talk about talent. You 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 need you need you need something there, right? They got some bones. You got Fox, you, you got Mitchell. I think Mitchell has shown in his rookie season that he has the ability to go crazy. He had a couple games last year, um, and and I like Harrison Barnes. I, I think we all like Harrison Barnes. I think Harrison Barnes is a fine player, um, but you add another wing put forward guy who can slide next to Sabonis. Obviously, they, they can't guard the stick, but <laughs> but if you can put the ball in a basket, I think Keegan Murray. Has star potential, and I think out of the first, out of the big three, he'll be my he'll be my bet to say like if I put put money on somebody being a superstar, that's who I put it on. And I know I know like situations matter, and I'm like in a in a Mike Brown scheme or system we've seen, or even even like you know where he where he's been like with the Warriors, like you've seen the wings mean so much. Um, even with, even with, obviously he had LeBron when he's in Cleveland, but wings mean so much to him. I feel like you get somebody who can put a ball in the basket on all three levels. That helps him a lot, especially especially when you got like Fox and Sabonis and other guys already around him. So that was my favorite one. Um, going down, you, you already you already mentioned Sharp, who I, who I, I like that one a lot. Um, for some reason, for some reason, I, I love I love Blake Wesley to the Spurs, I, I, and I don't know why. Maybe because Spurs are smart. You got rid of Derek White, who was making sixteen million dollars, way too much. Then you got an opportunity to, <laughs> <laughs> then you got an opportunity to to walk across Lonnie Walker contract. Nah, we're not playing that either. Nah, nah, we ain't, nah. Beasley, well, Wesley's the dog. You got four years with him. I think I think he slide right in and do the same thing, if not better than what Lonnie Walker was giving you. So you can replace that easily. I, I feel like this draft was a lot like a replacing because another one I like, very underrated. Uh, I love. I, first of all, I love the Kansas players. Uh, the bet one of the best players in the, in the game. Well, he, uh, all American. I can't even say his last name. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, Abaki. Abaki. He going to Cleveland. That is a very underrated move because does he take Osman and and Levert's minutes at some point like that? You can afford to replace that. Like it's, it's a very replacement draft. And I like the other Kansas uh, Christian Braun, the white man who known for dunking on everybody, which is you know very uh what's what's the word uh like not not. The opposite of ironic, like because he's not, you know, usually they, they shoot threes all the time. He's dunking everybody, but he go to Denver as a guard to maybe replace Will Barton, because Will Barton's making a lot of decent money too. Yeah. Um, and Denver has to go cheap when you better play Jokic, um, <laughs> three hundred thousand million billion dollars. <laughs> like he about to get the whole thing, whatever he wants. So you gotta go cheap somewhere else. And I think that that was that was two moves I saw from the Kansas side, uh, and with um. With uh, Blake Wesley, yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit further down. I'm gonna let you. T- I want. I want to hear you touch on that. Uh, that Warriors pick of them getting Man. Patrick Ball. How we let that? How we let and, that happen? Um, and I want to just hit pick it back off. You're the team you picked first. You 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 like the Keegan Murray to the Kings? I think they got a steal at 37 with Jaden Hardy because he can put the ball in the basket, mm-hmm. um, playmaking and efficiency wise. It's really all you want to see him improve on, and I feel like he's gonna have a chip on his shoulder because, like, he was like the last dude in the green room, man. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he was a la- like you can you can kind of see on his face, like, dang, like I, I, I think he was gonna fall that far. Like I think from a talent perspective, he was one of the ten or twelve best guys in the draft. Mm-hmm. Like he was second, uh, in his high school class when he came out. So to go thirty seven, see. And that's what it's like. Is the G but, but I, think, I think they might have traded that pick to Dallas. I think. I think it may. I think, I think they traded to Dallas. But either way, I mean, Jaden Hardy. I think that's a, a damn good pick. Yeah. So, so to start off with the with the Patrick Baldwin, like Patrick Baldwin, it's same same thing. Like he was one of the best players coming out of his class. He chose to go to uh, university was well, Milwaukee with his, with his dad there. So, you know, and, and you know he he got hit with a, he got hit with an injury play play season. Um, but it's another guy, a small four, power four who can shoot the basketball, spread the floor out, put the ball in the basket. Now, the fact that the Warriors have a whole star lineup of young players who can, who 
in the right system, which they are, which is probably the best system in the league. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 you tell, look, just listen to the starting lineup. They can have Wiseman, Kaminga, Patrick Baldwin. You can go uh, Pool, and then you can go Moody. That is crazy. That is crazy talent. That like to me, it's like a like to me, it's like Team USA with Curry, Clay, Draymond, and Wiggins, and then you got the uh, the select team right behind them. And then four years later, they're gonna be the Olympic team. Like that's that's what it seemed like it's building over there. Where Steve Kerr is like, all right, in out. Like like these guys, they about to graduate and retire, and now he got my next class about to come in here and go to work too. If it feel like it feel like a, a nice little college program over there in Golden State. Um, and I just don't know how we let him. Like I know he was gonna fall in the draft because of the injuries and all that kind of stuff. But we we already noticed what happened with Port, Michael Porter Jr. in Denver. He went to Denver. That was a steal. Now he's getting paid. If Baldwin can if Baldwin get right, man, I, that's that's a cheat code. That's a that's a cheat code. If he because I thought he was gonna be special, and even when he played in uh, in college, they was winning games when he was there. And then like we, yeah. with, without him, they you know, they started to take a little hit though. But but they threw a good team overall. But they yeah, you added a five star. Like oh my god, they should have been wait. They should have been went crazy in that in that uh, conference. But um, I did like that one. You were you right about the Jaden Harden. That's a that's a steal. Um, just because how you know how when when you when you got him. Um, I was actually I, I think I think the Mavs are preparing for them to, to make that trade. I think they're preparing for like a potential Jalen Brunson being but why, being why, moved. But why would you? All right. We can we can get to, we we'll get to Dallas uh, and for the thing, but I'm like, why why would you why would you give everybody a raise on Dallas? Everybody, Luca get, <laughs> Luca getting a raise, Finney Smith getting a raise. Uh, um, who else? Somebody, somebody, somebody. You get if you pay Brunson, then we, I mean it's really the whole roster. the whole roster getting a raise and they're gonna be the same team. That's just that's just financially irresponsible once again. So anyway, you got you got you got like I said, this is the draft of replacing guys and Mav set himself up pretty nicely with that one. Um, it was a it was a lot of reaches, not reaches, but like a lot of like players that I didn't think would go. Obviously, Ed and Mobley, his brother, they they, they back together. That was pretty. Cal- that's Cal- pretty Cal- cool. That's pretty cool. Um, but and obviously, obviously, and this, this might be a little homer, but um, because I'm a Kentucky, Kentucky Wildcat fan, but I love Ty Ty. Um, where he now going to Houston? I don't know. And and this is why this is why like I said this the, the, the replacement drafts. Do you pay Kevin Porter? Is he worth it? Is is Kevin Porter think, worth money? Like like. I think you think you think so? Yeah, I think they're gonna pay him something. Okay, because that's that's why cause I'm thinking to, to me, to me, if he got stronger, like because it's a lot it's a lot of games where like you can bully him a little bit and he kind of get go away, but like. We, we was asking him to be the second. We, we asked him to be the be, the best scorer because obviously nobody saw Oscar Tshiwe come out of nowhere, right? But and then Sharp couldn't play, so now we asking this guard to be the number one guy, which he probably is more like a number two. So alongside Jalen Green and alongside Jabari Smith, he will work. You know what I mean? So if they if they decide to go over Kevin Porter or if a Kevin Porter contract is is fairly decent to trade. Tata might be something, or maybe he might be. A, you know, I think I think he'll do wonders in like 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 summer league and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that one too. Um, I th- like I said, I thought I mean I thought it was an overall good draft. I I I, I didn't really I don't really see anything like go crazy. Like to me, like oh man, like why why would he get drafted? I know Scottie Pippen Jr. didn't get drafted, which he was the lead one. one, yeah, one he, already, he already signed a two way with Lakers. But he he was one of the best leading lead scores in, in in the nation. So you know, I mean, so I, I didn't think, I didn't think he would go undrafted. Like, I didn't think a guy like uh, Neb Nebhard from Nebhard, is that right from Gonzaga, the guard. Um, yeah. I didn't think he would get drafted. I, and he would like first pick in the second round. <laughs> like he was almost the first round. To, like, I, I can't remember what his next spot he went. I, I think it was yeah, I think it was thirty one to Pacers. I think thirty one. Um, he went to. Uh, let me get there. He went to. Yeah, I, I think I think at thirty one. Yeah, he went to the Pacers. Yeah, I thought that was crazy. I, I mean, that's that's if I had picked one, that's what I'm picking. Like, I'm like, come on, like what? But um, some 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 good draft day trades. I think six. Oh, did, yeah. I think six did a great job getting uh Melton. Uh, Melton, yeah. And you gotta think. And Green probably won't even play. Like his deal is not guaranteed, and he probably won't even play the year anyway. He just got his ACL torn in the playoffs, so that's yeah. usually like a year injury. So. Non guaranteed deal. It's just a, a few little coins on the Memphis payroll. Yeah, I say Memphis did a good job because they, they they wasn't gonna be able to pay 
Melton and Ty Jones when you have the guy in John Morant. So you're not going to pay that. Um, yeah, pretty pretty good draft. Um, my, my my Kobe and Shaq team, my, my Kobe and Shaq guys got drafted for Arizona. I'm glad about that. Colloquial, Colloquial went to uh, the Raptors. That game, that game, who they, who they, who they beating that? Who they beating the game? We was up all night watching. It was it was a they, March Madness. Who they, who they who was they playing? When, uh, well, my man, was it Texas Tech or somebody else? It was no, else. It was somebody else. Um, I forgot. I can't think of it was. It was somebody in March Madness. We were going back and forth. I was like, come on, come on, guys. And they finally got. I mean, that's my Kobe and Shaq parents. So I'm def- definitely going to be tuning in to see how my boy is doing out there in Arizona. So, uh, you know, uh, Matherin going to the Pacers and Coloco going to the Raptors. Um, hey, I think everybody from Duke got drafted. I believe yeah. so. So, uh, you saw you saw the Kendra Perkins and Desmond Bain and John Rent thing, man. Oh uh, yeah, hey, tell John to chill, hey, bro. <laughs> like, bro, Memphis, they're kind of annoying, really. They're like, annoying. they just yeah, they're like, annoying. bro, y'all talking and y'all have won anything. Like, I, I'm all for like talking, you're talking and everything, but bro, y'all haven't won anything. Yeah, I'm asking, you know? the, the only thing you can say about the Grizzlies is so far since John Rent become, became that guy, they've been improving every year, but been, that's about it. They've been, they've, been, they've been getting better and better and better. They, they getting cocky as hell, so. And it's kind of crazy. They got rid of they got rid of Valencia Unis and got better with Adams. It's crazy to me. All right, enough of the draft. You know what you want to say about draft? Uh, no, nah, man, that's pretty much it. You already, you already touched on Coloco. Like just from an organization standpoint, where you would trust who they're drafting for them to be developed properly. Mm-hmm. Chad and OKC, Bo Champ to Milwaukee, and Coloco to the Raptors. You can you can kind of trust those front offices to make good picks and develop those guys. Yeah, yeah. For sure, um, so we got we got uh, so those potential stars, you know, who, 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 whoever it could be, we don't. It could be one through sixty. It could be undrafted guy. We seen we seen undrafted guys go crazy. Um, so we we got we got a couple of uh, you know pending offers left. Bradley Beal, James Harden, Kyrie. No word of them yet. Kyrie been in the news crazy lately about the teams he's going to. First off, I think we should address that. Clippers, Lakers, Sixers. Miami Heat, Dallas Mavericks. I'm missing one more team. It was six of them. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was it though. Like Laker, both of the LA Lakers, teams. Yeah, both LA. Miami, Miami Dallas, Dallas, Knicks, and Knicks. Uh, oh Knicks. That's what. That's what. Uh, Sixers. Six. All right. First off, he's not going yeah, to the Knicks. He's not going to the Knicks. That's, that's 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 not that's not realistic. As far as the signing trade, Sixers, unrealistic. What? Who, who are you gonna go? Who are you gonna you gonna trade for what? Tobias here. You think you gonna you gonna go back with Jalen Harden again? That's not gonna happen. So that's not. That's no, he's not, not going anywhere. He's not going. He's not going there for sure. So the only one that makes sense is Miami to me out of all the teams, and I don't even like that one. So because if I'm Miami, I'm not trading Bam or Jimmy. So who are you gonna take? Her Hero and Lowry. No, he, he's yeah, not man. going anywhere. He's staying right there, right there in Brooklyn. Um, they 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 are probably in like a no win situation. Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, both sides are are stuck. You know. When I understand why the Nets did what they did, all right. If we get Kyrie, we're gonna get Kevin Durant. So, and at the time, they were building a quality roster with a bunch of young guys. So you can kind of see why they felt like, all right, well, this will be the next thing that puts us over the top. So it that that made sense. But at the same time, when you look at his history of missing games and the stuff that transpired with leaving LeBron in Cleveland. He left Boston after saying, you know, I wouldn't mind staying here. So the Nets kind of <laughs> hit their wagon to that duo of him and Durant. And then the first year, he knew Kevin Durant wasn't going to play. He played like 20, 25 games. And then was like, ah, I kind of want to play anymore. I'm hurt. <laughs> then you actually get hurt in the playoffs the next year. And then, of course, pan, you know, pandemic happens and stuff like that. And he's, uh, he's out because he's not vaccinated. The Nets did some of this to themselves by caving in to him. Yeah. Like, they could have really resolved all of this if they would have just traded him. Like, I understand you don't want to upset Kevin Durant, but at the same time, they yeah. should have just traded him. Like, should, instead of moving Harden, they yeah. should have moved him. I'm about to say, you, you should have you you got with KD and said, look, Kyrie is, is, is not – like because like, I think we, we, both, we both can agree – that Kyrie is is more on top of the mountain than Jalen Harden is right now. Like like Jay Harden is coming down the mountain. Like not and nobody not, not, not saying he's sorry or nothing like that, but he's on the way down to being to being you know to being out of the league more than Kyrie. So you 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 rather I keep mean, 
I, I feel like if Harden get a good summer's rest because the hamstring mm-hmm. to give me 22, 10, and 8, I'll still take that. I mean, yes, it, it, exactly. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same money, like Harden's going to, he, you know, the team has his bird right, so he'll make a little bit more, but it's essentially the same money. So for what Harden offers from a across the board standpoint, when healthy, I still prefer that. But so, from an age perspective, I can see why you would take Kyrie. What's a better team? KD, Ben Simmons, Kyrie with Harden and Embiid or swapping that? Embiid, Kyrie, and then you have not Harden, Ben, and KD because if six is on his, on his list, right? You probably you probably owned to something where you should have took your loss. You know what? It's not going to work because I mean, we were talking about that when the vaccine came out. Okay, if you can't play in New York, ask for a trade and go to a better situation. And what we said, Ben Simmons don't want to be in Philly. Swap, swap. Now you got now you got a superstar big. Like so, what if Kevin Durant can can close our games? You are the, the closer. Like let NB needs you still. Like so, you still need it because because I think Kyrie wants to be needed. I think that's the thing. Like he, I think to me, he was like he said he came out and said he was immature with LeBron, but I think he wanted to be the guy. And to me, and, and don't I mean I know you're a KD fan, but to me I think you can go on a team with KD, and even though KD's better than you, you can still be the man. Because Curry Curry didn't miss a beat. Curry was still the man in Golden State, and he, he just so happened to have KD. Like Russ was the man in OKC, he just happened to have KD. Like, I think like you can be on the team with KD and feel like you the man, but when you're on LeBron team, it just overshadows you. It, no matter what, no matter what you do, like it's LeBron, 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 LeBron. So yeah, like, it's just LeBron has this a LeBron is like gravity, like everything yeah. just goes to him. Like yeah. so, <laughs> like, so with good K- or bad, it goes to so him. So with KD or Embiid, you can be the man, and I think I think that's all he wanted. He wanted a superstar with him where he can be the man though. And either situation, I think I think Harden. With KD and Ben Simmons would fit better because Harden's whole thing was I'm tired of carrying the city by myself. And then once KD was hurt and Kyrie never was there, I ain't doing this no more. Like I'm like that's the whole point of me coming here. I'm not doing this again. And I get it because like I said, he's coming down a mountain, so you don't do that. But like know. I don't even think it was he was tired of carrying. I think when he got to the Nets, it was just like, Whew. yo, y'all want me to the to, to burn my bridge over here and come over here. But your man won't get everybody on the. T- okay, it was never revealed, but we can assume everyone on the Nets was vaccinated because nobody else missed any games. Right. And the mandate was if you're if you live in this area, you got to be mandated. You got to be uh, the mandate was to be vaccinated. So we can assume everyone on that team was vaccinated except for Kyrie because everybody else didn't have any problem planning the games or anything like that. Right. So if I'm James Harden, I'm still like yo. You told me your man's was solid. Y'all told me to come over here and run with y'all. Do this big three. Let's let's start winning. And I get over here and he don't want to get vaccinated. Yeah. I'm, I'm not with this. You done got hurt. He 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 out because he wanna be out. He come in play when he feel like playing. This ain't what I signed up for. I should have just stuck to my guns and went to Philly from the jump versus coming over here. Right. Yeah. And you you change you change everything because Rockets probably Rockets probably draft what if he already got Ben Simmons they probably they they, they probably reach for the uh, for Jalen Duran at four I mean at three <laughs> yeah I mean a lot of, a lot of stuff different because um all those picks they got from the Nets yeah so it, it would definitely have changed a a lot but yeah the, the Nets are this is their own fault they 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 kind of got themselves stuck in this they got to get themselves out I mean. Yeah, I, from a from a talent perspective, Kyrie is still dope. But you got to look out. You, you kind of got to give him the money. Five years, no, I'm not doing that. But I'll give you a three. And even if you do give him a five, I, I mean, even if you give him what he wants, I'll still trade him. Like once he's eligible <laughs> to be traded, I'll just stab you in the back and just trade you. <laughs> that boy, that boy, shy ain't got no principles. <laughs> Like as as a, as a GM, like, I just stab him in the back. Like, okay, well, all right, yo, go ahead and give him the money. And then whenever whenever he's eligible to be traded, out of here, he out of here. And at that <laughs> point, you will know he'll be playing some games. He'll be balling. He'll be at his peak. As long as the if the team is clicking, you make him ride it out. But at the same time, I'll still be like, if this chemistry, you out of here, Bucko. Mm. <laughs> I'll trade him. 
<laughs> hey, as former president of the Kyrie Hater Club, I approve that message there. Um, like, bro, it's a business, man. People get traded and every get day, locked man. every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, I think Jalen Harden opts in. I don't see him. If, if I'm the Sixers, you opt in. And I'm just gonna reevaluate at the end of the year because I'm not paying you right now either. You, you got you got to show me that you want to work and be and you still James Hard. I know 22, 10, and eight sound all good and dandy, but in the playoffs you want no 22 or 10 and eight. So so get get healthy because I still believe James Hard was hurt. Get healthy, oh, yeah. come back, and then we go from there. Um, and then Bradley Beal, I, I don't know, I don't understand his situation. Um, because opting in, you still want a contract, so. I don't know, but I don't know what opting out does for you, making one less year. I, but he's yeah, but he's it's the, it's the most interesting. Yo, he's so he confusing. Out, he's so confusing. So sign. Say it again. Yeah, like he he's in a position of power because if he opts out, he can just go sign wherever he wants to outright, or he can opt in and just say do a sign and trade. So he's in a position of power because the Wizards could lose it for nothing. Yeah. But he, but he's so confusing because he wants. We all know he wants the bag. All right, he loves DC. Okay, he also want to win. All right, but loving DC and being with the Wizards, not winning. That's that's not winning. Right. No. So so you want the bag, but you got so you got to stay with you got to sign with DC to get the ultimate bag. Right. There's the super mate. All but you got you got to sign with DC to do so. You want to be you want to be in DC. And you want to win. All three things cannot happen this year, because unless Porzingis turn into Dirk Nowitzki, Kyle Kuzma turn into Charles Tim Duncan. I just think it's my light skin. Tim Duncan and KCP turn into a better three and D. I, I don't. And, George, and Johnny Davis is the next coming of whoever. Like I don't know. They're not going to win a championship. So I think in. I mean, Probably barely a, a play-in barely, team, honestly. Yeah, he barely. Well, they probably they probably would have been way better if Bradley Bill played. If Bradley Bill gave me 75 games with Porzingis being healthy and Kuzma playing. We should be somewhere. But we just haven't hit on no draft picks either. I mean, I, I, I don't I think Rui. Rui, Denny. Denny, but I they ain't. Want, I want to see I think Denny might shine somewhere else. Denny, I, I, I think, I think uh, they're not letting – you can't have all these forwards in a way. Like – like you want to play Rui, you want to play Kyle Kuzma, and now you and you can draft Porzingis. I mean, I don't know about that. So yeah, you're right. You probably right. It's, it's, it is it is too log jam there. But if you're Bradley Bill, if I'm Bradley Bill, this is me. If I'm Bradley Bill, I'm out. I love DC. I love the money. I'm 28. Because I might be like John Wall soon. Sitting out a year trying to get traded somewhere with a bad contract. Or I can stop it right now, learn from the King LeBron James, and say, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere for a two year deal max. And we're going to do it again two years when I'm 30. Like, don't tie yourself in like KD did, where now, you, now your running mate want to leave. Two. Yeah, like, if, if KD would have waited, like, LeBron gave people the blueprint, the blueprint man. Like, they were there. talking about. Like Durant, like almost signed. Then they were saying like James gonna sign and Kyrie's gonna sign. We're gonna all be locked in and look at what happened. James you you locked in. Kyrie better be gone. Is is iffy. Yeah. If if you was Bill and you opt out, where where are you trying to go? Because obviously winning winning and getting the bag is the, is the, is the key. So you gotta get your money and you gotta go win. Where is that? Well, I mean, a lot of teams don't even really have a. Cash space, right? Yeah. Cash space. So when it <laughs> that's gonna be the thing. Like, where can you even walk to yeah, that has you, space that's ready to win? So you, your best bet is looking at like a sign exactly. and trade. I'm about to say because the thing is, but you you never want to mellow that thing, right? Going to you, you get traded to New York, take all their pieces, and you you got to play with Jason Kidd and Tyson Chandler who are on their last legs because you can't afford anybody else. So. At the same time. So it's a very tricky situation, and nobody has the cap space like you're talking about, especially that wants to win. Because if you want to win, you're broke. <laughs> you're like, people are pushing him to Miami. But even with that, that means D.C. believes in giving Harold starter $20-something 20, 20 million to nope. be a starter? Nope. 
the man and you're taking Robinson and some other pieces. I don't, I don't know what that does for the Wizards. The best, the best situation. If you're the Wizards, I I know what Harrow is, right? I'd rather take. I'd rather do this. Hear me. I'd rather say, "F it, give me all your picks. Give me Josh Hart. Give me uh, Shaded Sharp, and some other pieces, whatever." And I go to Portland. Yeah, I mean that's why. Because because if I got Grant and Dane, oh, we good. That's enough. Yeah, I can that's see enough. A, I can see a three team trade happening. Like that might be something that's on the table. Maybe like a three team trade, but I'm not sure who the third team would be. And then, of course, what um what would they want? Well, so well, Wizards need guards because like we, we just mentioned, it's too many too many guys log jam at the wing position and forward. So whatever you have to get, you have to get a guard back. And you, you, if you're the Wizards, you're gonna have to realize you have to take, you got to take the worst player, three team or two team, whatever it is. You're taking the worst player because you're not gonna get the same player back for Bill. So, and we're looking at location too, because like he did an interview with Taylor Rooks and he said, "I've already made up my mind what I'm gonna do." So clearly, I guess they're waiting on like the legal tampering period to open up or whatever. But he's saying he know what he's gonna do already. So I don't know what that means. Like, are you trying to link with with Tatum? your boy Taylor? That's what I think, but who Mark, get, Mar- get Marcus Smart out of it? But you're not taking Brown. Like, what's not? Uh, Boston not doing that. I don't think so. No, nah, yeah, you you can't give up Brown. So so you see, so you, you gotta give him Smart. Now you're giving him the defense player of the year. Like so, like <laughs> like if you if you are gonna trade Smart, now's the time because his his value would never be higher. But That's at fact. the same time, That's you're fact. just trading like your. I feel like if you trade Smart, you're basically. Cutting the heart out of that that team. Yeah, exactly. Hey, we got, he, he's they called Tatum and Brown out like we playing selfish and like he's kind of like the the vocal guy. He's the Draymond. So, he's the Draymond Green of that. Hey, we we only got a few seconds left uh, before we get out of here. We'll come back next week. We'll bring up all this once Bradley Bill opted in or in, uh, not. Um, so preach, care, preach with Rashad. We, we know Russ opted in. He, he can't pass oh, that money. Russ ain't crazy. Russ ain't crazy. <laughs> Russ ain't crazy. All right, <laughs> so we out. Preach, care, preach with Rashad. We out.